How did it start, this story of CO2? For, what was the first time you, you, you heard about it? Well, the first time I heard about it is a different It's question. different question, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, the issue began uh, with the beginning of the environmental movement. I mean, the origins of this issue are political from the beginning. Uh, the question was, uh, you know, what aspects of nature gave you the most political leverage? So, you know, climate, people don't understand it. You can say what you want about it. It was early on recognized climate was a good way to get a handle on the energy system. And that was already 60s. But at the time, we also oh, yeah. talked about the uh, uh, cooling of the oh, Earth. Oh, yeah, sure. The question is, well, how, how can you use climate? Okay, the temperature has been going down since 1940. It's going to cause an ice age. And what's the reason? Well, you know, energy creates sulfates, and that's reflecting light, and that's going to cause it all. Okay, that went for a while. It has actually got a lot of traction. Uh, you had all sorts, of, the New York Times covered it extensively, the coming ice age. Well, was it really, was there at the time a, a kind of consensus about the coming ice age? Or? Not, not quite, not quite. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most people thought it's not too serious. Uh, but uh, the environmental movement took it seriously until the temperature stopped going down in the 70s. And so the question is, how do you hang on to climate as an issue? Well, the temperature's going up. Uh, ah, CO2. CO2 is perfect for this. Because no matter how clean you make the burning, at the end you have CO2. Yeah, CO2. That's the product of perfectly clean burning. Mm -hmm. No CO, no sulfates, no nothing. So you had to make that a demon. It's a very strange demon, isn't it? It's the only demonized, the only pollutant I know, if you cut it by a little bit more than a half, we're all dead. I mean, what pollutant is so essential for life? I mean, uh, your mouth has tens of thousands of parts per million. The space station has, allows 5,000. I mean, it's really, I mean, it's amazing how much illiteracy this assumes. It has to assume people do not know there's photosynthesis. They do not know CO2 is essential for plants. They do not know that if you're growing tomatoes indoors or any other vegetable, you pump CO2 in to make them grow faster and better. Um, Instead, you, you can make people think it's a good idea to get rid of it. Yes. And if you ask them, do you know you'll die if you get rid of it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and scientists, uh, you and your, uh, well, in your department, or in a, how did they react when, they, uh, when the, this idea of bad CO2 came out and uh, oh. began to grow in the public debate? First of all, I mean, Forget the department for a moment. Uh, you know, I mentioned it was a small field. Uh, you know, at least in the U.S. and in France and in most of the world, all of a sudden in the 90s, the momentum, the IPCC and the Bellagio conference and other conferences, uh, funding in the U.S. went up by a factor of 15. I think in France it must have been very similar. You created a whole new community. You now do have hundreds of climate scientists at the University of Paris. Uh, they all know the only reason you have hundreds is because of the CO2 climate issue. Uh, they know that their job disappears if that issue disappears. So of course they support it. So okay. you mean that uh, it was other people who came uh, in science? Partly, partly, partly. Yes, you expanded the field greatly. All of a sudden you had 100 people here instead of one. All of a sudden in the U.S. you had 
hundreds of departments instead of 12. So sure, a whole new group of people. But also for anyone who is still active, not retired, uh, your administration wanted it. There was the money available and so on. So, for instance, in my department, you have people who work on extraterrestrial uh, planets, uh, people who work on all sorts of things unrelated to climate. They all became climate scientists, that's the designation. And how about the relationships between these new, uh, these new scientists well, and the, you know, the one who wrote it out? It's like a lot of things. It became part... I mean, already in 1990, uh, I had made my opinions and views known, and the New York Times actually covered it. And I went to a reunion of uh, my high school, which was something called the Bronx High School of Science. So it was a very successful high school and very good. And they asked me, they said, don't you realize that your position is politically incorrect? Already it was part of the canon of political correctness. 